Today's lesson is about simplifying radical fractions. It is Common Core 9 through 12 standard in point RN.1. Point a fraction is not in simplest form if it has a radical in the denominator. A radical in the numerator, however, is permissible. So that means you can have a radical in the top, but you cannot have one in the bottom for your final answer. So here's two examples. 2 divided by the square root of 15 and 2 square roots of 15 divided by 15. One of these is acceptable, one of these is not. The 2 divided by square root of 15 is not a final answer because you have a radical in the denominator. The 2 square roots of 15 over 15 is an acceptable final answer because you've done what we call rationalize the denominator because now the radical is not in the denominator, it's in the numerator. So this is a good final answer. Now here's the summation of rules about radicals. Reducing a radical fraction to simplest form is easy. There's just a, a one step really to follow. If a radical exists in the denominator, simply multiply the numerator and the denominator by this radical. If you do that, a radical multiplied by itself cancels out the radical. So the fraction is simplified. So anytime you have a radical in the denominator, multiply numerator and denominator by that radical and you have simplified that rational expression. Example 1 says simplify. 5 divided by the square root of 2. Well, to simplify it, we first got to know, well, what is the problem with it? Well, you'll notice this one has a radical in the denominator. So what do we do? How do we simplify this? Well, like we just talked about, anytime you have a radical in the denominator, to rationalize that denominator, you multiply top and bottom by that radical. So that 5 divided by square root of 2 will multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. Now remember, with fractions, when you're multiplying, you multiply straight across. So if you do that, you're going to get 5 square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. But square root of 4 we can reduce. We all know the square root of 4 is 2. So replace it. So the final answer is 5 square root of 2 all divided by 2. How do we know we're done? Because the denominator no longer has a radical. It has been rationalized. Example 2 says simplify 8 divided by 3 square roots of 5. Now this one's a little bit different. This one we have a rational part of the denominator and an irrational part of the denominator. In other words, there's a number inside the radical and there's a number outside the radical. Well, what do we do with something like this? Well, we work it exactly the same. So I noticed the square root of 5 is the problem on this one. It's the thing I've got to simplify. How did we say to simplify it? Well, anytime you have a radical in the denominator, you simply multiply the numerator and denominator by that radical, which in this case is square root of 5. Well, if you do that, remember fractions multiply straight across. So 8 square roots of 5 is well, it's 8 square roots of 5. And the 3 on the bottom we just simply bring over because it's the only number outside of the radicals. And then you multiply the radicals together. And square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 5 times 5 is 25. But this reduces. Square root of 25 is the same thing as writing 5. And now 3 times 5 is the same thing as writing 15. So the rationalized answer, how we have simplified this question, is 8 square roots of 5 all divided by 15. So if you thought example 2 was a little tricky, let's try another one just like it. Let's simplify 3 divided by 2 square roots of 3. Well, how do I do this one? Well, again, where is the problem? Well, the radical in the denominator. And to get rid or cancel off that radical, you multiply top and bottom by that square root of 3. Well, 3 times square root of 3 on top is 3 square roots of 3. On the bottom, well, the 2 is the only thing outside the radical, so you simply bring it over. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 3 times 3 is 9. But this reduces because square root of 9 is the same thing as having a 3. Well, now we just multiply those numbers together on bottom and we have our answer. So 2 times 3 will give you 6. So the answer is 3 square roots of 3 all divided by 6. But wait a second. Now look at the 3 and the 6 that are both on the outside of the radicals. 
Well, there's a number that will go into three and go into six. Well, it's three because three will go into itself one time and three goes into six two times. So this answer actually reduces to one square root of three, which is just square root of three, all divided by two. So three divided by two square root of three simplifies is the same thing as square root of three, all divided by two. So now let's look at example four. Simplify 2x divided by the square root of x. Now this one's a little bit different. Every other problem we've done, the number inside that radical was an actual number, a constant. This time, we have a variable. Well, what do we do? Well, it's the same process. So don't let that throw you off. So 2x divided by the square root of x will multiply top and bottom by another square root of x. Well, on top, 2x times square root of x is just that, 2x square root of x. On bottom, square root of x times square root of x, well, x times x is x squared inside that radical. But this reduces. Anytime you have a square root and a squared, well, they're opposite each other. In other words, they cancel each other off. So square root and square just simply give you an x. But now look at the top and bottom. They're very, very similar. At least one part is because you have an x outside the radical on the top and an x without a radical on the bottom. So those simply divide off. They're the same thing on top and bottom. Just like when you have a three divided by three, they divide off. Well, x divided by x does the exact same thing. So our final answer on this one is two square roots of x. Notice it is our final answer because there is no longer a radical in the denominator. So here's our final example, example five. Simplify one minus the square root of two all divided by the square root of five. So now we have what's called a polynomial, more than one term on top because they're separated by the minus sign. Well, how do you do it? Well, the exact same way. The problem is not with the top, it's with the bottom. We have a radical in the denominator. So how do we fix it? Well, square root of five, to get rid of it, you multiply top and bottom by the square root of five. It's just a matter of you've got to remember that square root of five on top is multiplied by everything on top. So we have one minus the square root of two times the square root of five, all divided by square root of five times square root of five. Well, five times five is the square root of 25. So now what do I do? Well, that square root of five on top, I actually have to distribute it. So if you distribute it, well, one times square root of five is square root of five. Square root of two times square root of five, well, two times five underneath the radical is square root of 10. And it's all divided by the square root of 25 reduces and gives you five. Now that is the final answer because remember, to add and subtract radicals, they must have the same number inside, the same radicand. And you'll notice square root of five and square root of 10, well, five and 10 are just simply not the same numbers. So that is as simplified as you can get that answer. This is what you have to do when you have a radical in the denominator. You must rationalize the denominator.